Greetings everyone, JC Bad Edit Pro with a video today. It's a screencast from my Windows 7 desktop. And I would suggest that if you would like to get the most from this video, that you look at it in full screen mode because I have to run it in 1280 by 800 resolution. And you'll see why in just a couple of moments. Okay, let's take a look at my Windows 7 machine. It's pretty standard. Uh, I've got 4 gigs of memory, 3.5 of it is available to the operating system because I've got an internal video card that uh, takes a half a gig off the top for itself when it boots up. I've had this machine for a couple of years and it runs very, very well. And it has a triple core AMD processor in it. However, I cannot run Windows XP on it. There uh, is a way that you can take any computer and run two operating systems at the same time. Now, the operating system, for those of you who don't know, is the software that allows you to run your programs. Okay, So when people talk about Windows, Macintosh, Linux, those sorts of things, that's what they're referring to as an operating system. Well, I cannot run Windows XP physically on this machine because uh, it's just not compatible with the hardware. However, I can run Windows XP in a virtual machine. I've had a lot of folks ask me about virtual machines. I'm going to show you what it's about. Okay, As you can see, the software that I'm using, which is VMware Workstation 7, looks pretty unassuming. On this side, it's got a lot of things that look like, you know, what you'd have in your computer. <laughs> and on this side, there are some controls. What does it do? Well, if I push this button right there, click that link, you will see we're going to boot up a Linux Mint 9 virtual machine. As far as the Linux Mint installation is concerned, it's running on a hard computer, like a real physical computer, okay? Um, it's getting 512 megabytes of memory, which is plenty for uh, Linux, and uh, it gets access to the internet through the router. As a matter of fact, when they go out to the internet, all of these machines get their own IP address. And um, on the network within the house here, the machines show up as computers, so they can all be accessed through the network. Okay, we're up. All we got to do is put in a password, and then we can get ourselves logged in. When this gets settled in here, we will launch yet another virtual machine. The reason why I got into virtualization in the first place was to be able to run Windows XP. So let's go ahead and boot up the Windows XP virtual machine. And all of this is running on one computer at the same time. As far as the network is concerned, there are three. There's the familiar Windows XP boot up screen that we all looked at for about 10 years. There are some programs that I have audio related and video related that just simply do not run on Windows 7. Um, for uh, an example, I really like Adobe Audition 1.5, which is an editor that you use to uh, do multi-track audio. Now, Adobe Audition 3 runs fine on Windows 7, but I like 1.5 better. And I can run it here on Windows uh, XP with no problems. So now that we have them booted up, let's take a look around. And here we are. We're going to take a look at uh, Linux Mint. And uh, go ahead and pull up uh, a web browser. I use Google Chrome. And I've got Google Chrome installed here. One of the nice things about Linux is that it is totally and completely immune to viruses, uh, pretty much. Um, I don't think a whole lot of people are going to bother to write viruses for Linux, so it's pretty safe. As a matter of fact, there really isn't a whole lot of antivirus software out there. So uh, it's nice to have this running in a virtual machine because if you're ever venturing into parts of the internet that are quote-unquote dangerous, well, you can go with uh, no fear of uh, infecting your entire system. If you crash one of these machines, no big deal. Um, you'll just, uh, you know, you can rebuild another one and it doesn't take everything away. You can have everything all backed up. So my friend Clem has posted a video here just to show you how YouTube works. 
Hello, this is Cool Dude Clem here, and if you've been following my videos, I'm sure you're well aware that I'm going to be doing my future cartoons in Adobe Flash now. Now, I know some of you... Okay, so you, as you can see, you can run Flash within Linux. Not a problem at all. While this is running, I can jump over here to Windows XP, and I can show you that uh, we also have uh, Google Chrome installed over here also have the mail program. Let's go back to Linux here. I can open up the mail program and show you that. It uses Mozilla Thunderbird. I like Thunderbird for Linux and I at one time I ran it for Windows as well but um, I just run Windows Live. Got a message that I need to check out. Okay. Well, I'll look at that after I get done doing the video. And uh, of course now these machines can all be doing different things at the same time. So what a lot of businesses do is use the virtualization process to uh, run like 10 servers on one piece of hardware at the same time and uh, that saves them money on hardware and all of the servers uh, run in uh, a team uh, that's mainly what uh, VMware's market is if we go here and take a look at the network in uh, Windows 7 hold on let me get to network we can see all of the machines that are up. Uh, this is uh, Lindsay's computer downstairs, which seems to be on. Uh, this is the computer, the host computer. Here is uh, the Linux machine that just loaded itself up. And there's the Windows XP machine. So I can open that up. I can get to the documents on the Windows XP machine. Not much in there, of course. I don't use it that often. And usually when I do, I take stuff right off. Now, I don't think that we can see much of anything on the Linux machine. Let me see. I'll back that up. There it is. It's the first one on the list. Okay, yeah, we're not, we can't see anything because nothing is shared on that machine. I'd have to go in and set up the networking in there. But I can go to the Linux machine, and hopefully this will work. Um, sometimes this works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a little bit wonky because I haven't gone through and actually set it up yet. Oh, it, nope, I take that back. It logged right in. Now you can see all of the machines on the network. And I can go in here and look at the host machine. There's all of the shares. Some of this stuff you can't get to because uh, Windows 7 uses its own kind of network uh, called Home Group. And I have it set up where they kind of talk to each other, but they don't. So you have to know what you're looking at. But you can go over here to the other virtual machine and open that up and as you can see here's the work folder on the desktop I always put a work folder on Windows machines on a network so you can just uh, read and write back and forth between that work folder it works out great that way and then all of the documents and anything that you share on the machine uh, you can share with read-only privileges and you don't have to worry about somebody on the network trashing your your stuff without you even knowing it's going on here is a uh, lens computer downstairs which seems to be up and running once again you have the work folder a lot of stuff in her work folder so I'm gonna open up a document in Linux that's on the computer downstairs there's a picture of Miss Lynn right there running on the Linux virtual machine and that's in the work folder on the computer downstairs so the applications for virtualization you know they go on and on and on you can just do so much with it and uh, for a computer geek like me, it is a lot of fun. Of course, anytime that you uh, open anything up in Linux, it stays mounted on the desktop. So it's uh, always there. And uh, the Linux operating system itself is really cool. I'm going to try this and see if it doesn't crash the screen capture. We'll do a full screen here. And now we're looking at the Linux Mint desktop in full screen. We can take a quick look around here. You've already seen the Internet and the Mail client and... Uh, Here's something that you'll have to get used to if you work in Linux. It's a terminal. <laughs> because Linux is for the server room, ladies and gentlemen. It will run on a desktop, um, but you still need to know how to put a few commands in. So it appeals to the geeky people like me. Okay? So there you go. That's a tour of a virtual machine. And one of the really cool things about virtual machines uh, is uh, that you can store them as files. And I'll show you that real quick. The virtual machines on this computer live on a hard drive 
called VM, which is uh, the V drive in the machine. So all we have to do to get to it is go to the computer and look at the VM drive. And you'll see there's a folder here called VM. And here is the Linux Mint machine, which is running. Now, the way this works is, is that it uses what's called a virtual drive, which is basically a big file that emulates a hard drive. And in this particular instance, uh, the VMDK file is this big one right here. VMDK is a virtual machine disk, and uh, here it is. So what you can do is you can move these machines around. For instance, my buddy Scotty D wanted a virtual machine of Linux Mint. I said, I'll build you one. I'll send it to you. And here it is in a zip file. And it zipped up to be, you know, like uh, not that big. It was 1.6 gigabytes. So not bad there at all. And we were able to transfer that over the internet. Now he's running VMware Fusion on his Macintosh machine. And uh, he was able to just drag it onto the desktop after he uncompressed the file and click on it. And he was running his uh, Linux Mint machine on uh, his computer. It was that quick. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention about the virtual uh, environment is that if you do run Windows within a virtual environment, you do have to have antivirus software. And it's because it's just like a computer. And uh, you can get a virus on Windows, uh, whether it's running in a virtual machine or running on a uh, regular computer. And uh, in this case, I use uh, Windows or Microsoft Security Essential for Windows, uh, which is really good antivirus software that nobody knows about because uh, Microsoft doesn't make a lot of noise that they have it, because if they did, then all of the people who were selling virus programs like uh, McAfee and Norton and all those people would be very upset. So let's go ahead and shut down our virtual machines, and we can uh, end this little video. And anybody that has any further questions, I'd be glad to uh, try and answer them. It's a little geeky thing. And uh, with the shutdown of Windows XP, we will shut down the video. Thanks so much for watching. JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye.